friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Window Scene Spring, Scootin' By, and the Holiday Party Animal. So I've stamped all those images on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my bunny, and for him I'm using E31, E33, and E35. I like to color darkest to lightest, so I'm starting with that E35 and laying in some shadows down the back of the bunny's body, also on the underside of his arms and between his legs, just to create a bit of separation there. And then I'm going to begin to blend that out with my mid-tone, which is the E33. Just making sure to color over the edge of that E35 and pull a little of that darkest color into the mid-tone so I get a nice smooth blend. And then I saved most of the area there for the lightest, the E31. And my marker looked like it was getting a little leaky, so I just popped the other lid off and that usually does the trick and just kind of equalizes the pressure in the barrel so the marker doesn't kind of glube out on you. So I'm going to continue coloring with that E31 and blending out most of this bunny. I did decide to leave a little kind of white heart shape on the bunny's face. So since he's facing sideways, you only see half of the heart. And I also left some little white patches on his feet. And just to help transition that into the white area, I will pull in the E30 to just soften that. And I did add a touch of that E30 to the inside of the ears, to the tail, and the belly of the bunny. Then I'm going to darken that combo up and use the E33, E35, and E37 for the tree in this little Easter scene. And just to keep it consistent with the bunny, I'm also adding my shadows on the left hand side. And then coming in with that mid-tone, the E35, it did look like it was almost darker than the E37, but I just continued working with it. And then I'm going to bring in that E33 for the highlight and just fill in the rest of that tree. And I don't really mind if the blend isn't perfect on the tree anyway, because I want it to look like it has some texture. And in fact, I will be adding a little bit of texture with some wood grain patterns in just a bit. But I want that ink to dry first so that the patterns will stand out. I did go back in with that E37 and just darken up those shadowed areas once more. And then once that had about a minute or so to dry, then I came in with the E39 and started to draw in some patterns. It wasn't quite dark enough for me though. I felt like once that marker dried back, it would be almost invisible. So I changed it up and decided to pull in the E27, which is a much darker marker. And that stood out so much more. So I just kind of retraced my lines there and added that in. And if some of the lighter shade shows up too, that's totally fine because there can be, you know, different depths of grooves on that tree. So then I wanted to color in the sky before I got any further. I didn't want to do the grass and then potentially pull some of that green into the sky when I was flicking. So I went ahead and did that next using the BG10 and BG11. I'm using that BG11 closest to the horizon line and then blending up with the BG10 and letting that kind of fade into white at the very top. And I will go over this a couple of times just to smooth out that blend so that you don't see those little flick marks and everything is a little bit um, more seamless. So I just went back and also just increases that saturation a bit and makes it a little bit darker, but not as dark as if I would have pulled in the next darkest shade, which would be the BG 13. I think that would have been a little bit too much for what I was going for here. 
So now that the sky is done, I can color in the leaves on the tree, and I'm going to use YG03, YG05, and YG07. They're pretty small, so it doesn't take a lot to fill them in. You could probably even get away with just two shades, but I'm actually going to add in a fourth one later on. But I started with the YG07 and then blended out with the YG05, just making sure to leave a little bit of room on the tip of each leaf for that lightest shade. That would be where the light would be coming through the leaf the most. So I wanted to have that nice bright YG03 at the very end. I did go in with the YG07 and just add a little extra touch of color and then my marker leaked on me. Thankfully it didn't make too big of a blob. It basically stayed inside of that leaf. So I just pulled the other end of the cap off and continued on with the rest of the leaves, but I'll go back and add a bit more contrast as I mentioned later on. So I switched up that combo to a slightly lighter version by taking away the YG07 and adding in the YG01, which is even more yellow toned. And I'm gonna start coloring in my grasses by bringing in that YG05 from either side and in a few places I'm just going to pull that color even more toward the center especially toward the bottom of the scene just to give it a little more grounding and adding those little flicking motions is going to help each shade kind of blend into the next one as well because the color just tapers off and gets a bit softer. So I use the YG03 as the mid-tone for the grasses and then I'm going to fill in the center with the YG01. That one is really pale, but it's gonna help my flowers and things stand out a bit more. Also, if I accidentally color into my flowers, it's not a big deal because I can push that color out with the colorless blender and it's not so dark that uh, it'll be impossible to do that. I am gonna go in with a second layer using that YG05 to darken things up a little bit more. And again, just smooth out a bit of that streakiness. And then the YG03 next. And just pulling that color again a little more towards the center. And then a few extra flicks with that YG01 to finish off that grass. For the little patches of grass, I really wanted to darken those up quite a bit so they would stand out. So I added in the YG07 and then the G28. The G28 is probably a bit of a stretch to blend with the YG07. I made it work by just really blending over the edge of that G28 and pulling that color together. But um, I would maybe have used a slightly lighter shade than the G28. I just couldn't find one in my collection that was like a perfect match for the yellow greens that I already had going on that wouldn't make the grasses look too dull. So I just made the best of it and got everything to blend nicely. And I think it still retained that brightness that I wanted while keeping that contrast. And then, like I said, I'm gonna come in with that G28 and just add a little line down the center of each leaf for a little more contrast there. So then I wanted to come in with my colorless blender and just clean up any little bits that got a little coloring in them that I didn't want. So some of the Easter eggs, the rays of the sun, and a few of the flowers as well accidentally got a little bit of color in them. So I'm just taking that colorless blender, which is just the pure alcohol, and pushing that color back outside of the lines, pushing it deeper into the fibers of that cardstock so that you get the white on the surface again and I can color over them with other shades. So for the rays of the sun, I'm using Y000 and Y02, putting that Y02 closest to the sun and then getting softer as I come down toward the outside edges. And then for the rest of the sun, I'll keep the Y02, but add in the Y06 and Y08. 
So I'll add a little of that Y08 at the top corner and then blend toward the rays with the Y06 and then finish with the Y02. So it kind of just goes from the darkest at the top right to the lightest at the bottom of the rays. And then while I have those markers out, I'll just color the centers of the flowers with that Y08 as well. Then I'm going to bring in some pinks using R11 and R20. I'll color in the bunny's nose with the R20 and then his ears. I'm going to use both shades and also both shades to color his rosy cheek in just to make him look a little more cheerful. And I wanted to blend that out even further since it's on the white with the R000. And then I'm going to start coloring in some of the little Easter eggs. So the one by the tree I did with this combo. I did the center stripe of the one that is lying on its side down at the bottom of the scene. And also the uh, larger stripes from the one that is up above the bunny. So my idea for this card was to depict the Easter Bunny because this little bunny from Scootin' By, who's supposed to be riding on a scooter, I just thought it looked like he was tiptoeing around in the scene, which made him perfect to be the Easter Bunny because he's out there kind of stealthily hiding his eggs. So I switched to a purple combo, V22, V25, and V28 for the stripes on that egg. And then I did the outer part of the little speckled egg that's up in the tree, just carefully coloring around those polka dots. And also the one that's up on the hill right below the sun. Then I decided to go back to my aqua combo, but I am going to darken it up now with the BG13 and BG15 added to the BG11, which I used for the bottom of the sky. And I'll do the Easter egg with the pink stripe that's hiding in the grass. And then the stri stripe in the center of the egg that is up on the hill that was still uncolored. And then my um, daisies, I'm just going to do BG10. I wanted to keep them simple and that's why I colored them white so the Easter eggs would really stand out. And for the rest of that last Easter egg, I just went really light with Y000 and Y02 and I also did the polka dots on the purple Easter egg in the tree with those shades. Then I'll grab a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen to go over the eye of my Easter Bunny and make that nice and bright and shiny again. And then I'll use a clear glaze Jelly Roll to just add some details to some of these Easter eggs. So I added it to the purple stripes on that single egg and to the polka dots and other stripes of the various eggs as well. And also to the rays of the sun, just filling in that whole area. And I accidentally dragged my hand through the purple stripes on the single egg over there. So I just went back over that once again. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. Then I'm taking some pattern paper from the new Flower Market 6x6. I'm using all of the floral prints except for the gray. And I'm going to trim those down into some thin strips. And I have two of each shade and I'm going to adhere those to the front of my card base. I'm using some speckled eggshell cardstock from Lawn Fawn for my card base. I scored and folded that to a standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall with the top fold. And I'm taking some Elmer's glue tape runner for this. I feel like the tape runner works better for these tiny little bits holding them all down than the, um, the liquid glues do. So I'm starting up at the top corner with pink and I accidentally cut that strip a little too short. So I just went with the rest of it and then I'm going to layer them in rainbow order. So pink, yellow, green, blue, purple. And I will continue that pattern the whole way down the card. 
and I'm just adding exactly as much as I need on the left hand side so that if I ended up needing any extra strips I might be able to use some of what I trim off from the outside edges. I didn't end up needing it. Two strips was more than enough for all of these. In fact, I didn't even use the second purple one, so that's the only color that only appeared on there once. But I'm just going to continue. Once I hit the purple, I'll start back at the beginning with the pink, and then the yellow, and the green, and then I'll get a tiny little corner of that blue down at the bottom. But I only got a little corner of the pink at the top, so it ended up working out perfectly. Then I'm going to take my Cutter B Teflon Coated Scissors, and I'm going to trim all of that additional cardstock that's hanging over the edges off. These scissors are an amazing workhorse. I've had them since I started crafting over 11 years ago. Still the same exact pair I've been using all this time, and I use them almost daily. They are wonderful. So I just trimmed off all of that until everything was nice and flush, and then I have that beautiful pattern going on in the background. So now I wanted to work on my sentiment, and I'm going to stamp that down in Versafine Onyx Black ink, just because I wanted something super bold that would really stand out against those different patterns. And then I'm also going to stamp on the inside of my card to finish that off. And I'm using the Sitting Bunny from Butterfly Kisses, and some bubblegum ink. And then I'm also going to reuse that egg uh, from the uh, Holiday Critter set that I showed at the beginning. The grasses are also from Butterfly Kisses. And the sentiment was from the um, spring scenes. I used the window scene winter to actually die cut the spring scene out. I don't have the matching die for the spring one, but the window scene winter also fits the same scene. So I also did the little scalloped border in some more white cardstock just to give that a little bit of a frame. I glued those two together with my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, and then I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of the scalloped piece so that I can pop that up and just give it a bit more dimension. Because we've got all that pattern going on in the background, this just helps to have a little bit of separation with that border and also having the panel raised up a bit. So I'll peel off those release papers and then I'm going to line that up in the center of my card, a little high of center, and press that down into place. I selectively die cut that sentiment using the Everyday Sentiments banner and pop that up on a little bit of foam tape as well. I'm going to center that just below that frame and pop that down. And then I'm going to add my Easter Bunny down in the scene. I actually wanted him to be a little bit outside of the frame. I thought it just gave this card a little bit more whimsy. So he's actually standing down on the frame outside of the scene. And then I'm going to tuck that extra Easter egg into his hands to make it look like he's out there placing them in different hiding spots. To finish up this card, all it needed was a bit of sparkle. So I'm going to grab my favorite Stardust Stickles and just finish off the Easter eggs that didn't have the clear glaze pen on it. So uh, just avoiding the stripes and the dots there. And then I also decided to add it to the centers of all of the flowers. So just adding a tiny little dab on the yellow parts. And then I'm going to pick this up so you can see all of that detail from the Stardust Stickles and the Glaze Pen. And then I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. So I hope you guys don't mind this is going to go up the day after Easter, but I just couldn't resist squeaking it in for the season. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so that you're always notified when I post a new video, which is every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll have everything linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.